Okay, so that would be the bushing set. Okay, now I'm going to bring down my seal. I'm going to get it in there, make sure it's straight. And if you have to hit this more than three times, your prep work sucked. I mean, I see guys on YouTube pounding on these things 15 or 20 times. Man, you'll be lucky if you don't tear the seal. So here we go. Okay, it actually seated after two, but I'll give it one more because I like odd numbers better. All right, so now we take our snap ring. We put the closed side in first, push the open side, take a screwdriver, and I want to listen for that. And I go through all four places on that C on that ring and make sure it's snapped in place. And it is. Okay, so now I'm going to bring this down. Okay. One, one, one or two good taps and that's in. Okay, now you can see I see a couple things here that I want to address. I have a little burn mark on my fork. I don't know if you can see that in the picture. I can't sit here and stand in this one spot for 10 minutes trying to remove that. But I can give it another pass, maybe a couple little passes, and try to get most of that out. Okay? Because in reality, to remove it all, if I sanded it that much, I could make my tube out around, and you definitely don't want to do that. Okay, so we're going to clean this off. Okay, and again, I mean, look at the polish. Look at the shine on that fork, man. Alright, so right here is my mark. Now I want to feel it. Okay, go ahead and feel it there, cameraman. We want it we want it, want it to feel smooth, no ridges. So again, you know, sometimes these will come all the way off, sometimes they won't. Uh, the important thing is that it's smooth, and that's what we care about. So that's really not going to hurt anything. Okay, now, with no oil, no spring or anything in my fork, this is how you check to see if your fork leg is bent. I drop it in and I spin my fork 360 degrees as I move it up and down. If this fork was bent, it would stick somewhere. And then when you moved it, it would drop in. So these forks are not bent, but that's how you tell. So, you know, people that say, oh, I crashed and I wonder if my fork is bent. Your buddy walks up and looks at him and says, yeah, it looks okay to me. Yeah, you can't really tell. You have to disassemble them and do this test and that will tell you if your fork is bent. Okay, so got the new seal in, got everything in place. Uh, so I'm gonna pump this up a few times and then I'm gonna clean the grease off. Okay, so the reason I put less grease on my dust seal than my oil seal because whatever grease I put on here could eventually end up on my leg at, it, you know, as it wears away. So I'm gonna clean this off and that minimizes any amount of grease rings that's going to be left. That's why I cycled it a bunch. So, But you know, if you do have a, a freshly rebuilt fork job and you see some grease rings, don't worry about it. That's actually a good thing. That means the guy greased your bushings and your seals and everything when he put them back together and just wipe it off and within a couple hundred miles of use that grease will stop showing up. Okay, so now I'm ready to fill it. Okay, I know these forks. Again, I'll say that. I know most forks, but all right. So I'm going to put 450 milliliters of oil in this fork, and which is let's see, 450. It's uh, let's call it 15.8 ounces. Okay, so regardless of the spec of your fork. I mean, you can look up any fork and it'll tell you, oh, it holds 16 ounces of oil. That's not near as important as setting what's called the air gap. Okay, so you always adjust your level to what's called the air gap because unless you 
100% disassemble your fork and strip and clean every component, you're going to have residual oil in there. So if my spec is 16 ounces and I have 2 ounces in there, all of a sudden my fork is overfilled. Okay, so that's no good either. So just use this as a reference and then we're going to set our level by way of what's called an air gap. Okay, I'll explain that as we go. So we're going to take this out. Again, we're going to control it by the dampening rod. Now when I pour this oil in, I want this rod up. Okay, if it's down, my valve is closed and I don't know, I'm, it probably doesn't matter because you're going to bleed it anyway, but again, I'm pretty picky. So um, I figure if I hold it open when I pour my oil in, I'll displace that air as I'm pouring my oil in and you'll actually hear the gurgling that's going on and that's what's, what's happening is I'm just placing the air in my cartridge with oil. There it is really sliding. I'm sure you can't hear that. So it's a, like I said, it's a slight gurgling. Okay, so you can see my oil level right there is pretty high. Okay, again, this is a weighed in amount. So I'm going to pour it until I see just drops. And then I know I got 450 milliliters inside there. Okay, now you see my oil level. As I pump up my cartridge, you'll see that oil level drop because I'm just placing the air with oil. You'll also feel and hear little air bubbles. Um, once you can go both ways, up and down, and you feel even resistance, then you've bled it. Usually five or six times is enough, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bleed it. I'm going to push the rod all the way down. Then I'm going to look in there see if any air bubbles come up. Okay, there's nothing. So we are in fact bled. Okay, now my air gap. You want to set, this, this fork requires a 120 millimeter air gap. Okay, if I don't have an air gap or if my air gap is not right, let's say the spec on this is 120. Let's say I set it at 50. What happens is as my fork goes through its action, the oil level rises it will hit the top of the calf and have nowhere to expand and your fork will feel like hitting a brick wall. So your air gap is critical and most of these style upside down forks where you have preload and rebound on the top and compression on the bottom, 99% of them they're all within uh, 100 to 120 millimeters uh, down. So. That air gap is measured, again, re remember I have no spring, here's my spring, my spacer, my rebound dampening rod, my cap, none of that is installed. My fork tube is slid all the way down and then I measure this air gap. Okay, so I took a Motion Pro level tool, which is this part, and they come with a little syringe and that thing sucks. Every time I pulled back the rubber would pull off the syringe. So I modified mine and I'm using a brake bleeder. So I just set it in there and this is set at 120 millimeters already. So I set that in there, I hold it down, I hold my fork straight, pump it up and you can see through my hose that I'm pulling oil out. I might have to dump it. Running out of room. Okay, we're going to dump that just because I'm running out of room. So this was uh, the oil we pulled from the last fork. So can you hold this just for a second? Sorry about that. Try to do that as 
quick as possible. Put my tool back together. Okay, I take my fork, put my level gauge in it. Pump up my bleeder. You can see it pulling oil out of the hole. You can see the container is filling up with oil. Okay, so right there. So right there, my fork is set exactly at 120. But more importantly, both forks are actually set the exact same. It doesn't matter how much fluid was left or anything, air gap is the only way to set your fork oil level. If you're not doing it that way, if you're just doing it by the amount of volume, you're doing it wrong. So, all right, so now we're gonna, our fork is full of oil, okay, so from here, we want to put our components get fork oil off my lips back in but we're not just going to take it and drop it because I don't want oil to splash out this is a very precise measurement so I'm going to carefully drop my spring in then I'm going to raise up on my cap or actually I'll keep it down for display purposes so this is going in like this okay and don't worry about my dirty fingerprints it'll be cleaned off before I close it up Okay, so now I'm going to grab my dampening rod, pull it up, and now I have something to handle it by. Come back over here to my spring compressor, and it obviously should be set because this is the same fork I just disassembled. So we line up that hole. These holes are a little bit offset. Okay, and then we line up that hole. Then we compress our spring. Until I can get my tool underneath the nut. Okay, I can't get it there. And yes, I could crank it all the way down, but you really don't want to go any farther than what you have to. touch more okay now I can go ahead and take this off and this nut is being held in place again just like remember when we disassembled it it's being held in place by the pressure of this spring okay by the preload so we're not going to mess with that we're going to leave that the way it is. We're going to put it back in our vise with aluminum jaws. And then we need to check this. Okay. The spec is 10.5 millimeters. So zero your micrometer. That's almost 11. And what's important is I set my other one at 10.5, so I want them to be the same, okay? So when I turn this, I'm pushing inward pressure into my tool, because if I was to turn it this way, my rod could pop out, my, my tool could come undone, and it would be a bad thing. So we're too high, or too low, we're at 11. So we need to bring this up. Let's just go a couple turns. Ten point eight. Okay, remember my target is ten point five. Ten point five three. That's perfect. Okay. So turn that off. Okay, now we're going to take my rebound dampening rod, and again, this cartridge is all full of oil, so we're not just going to fling it in there. I'm going to slowly work it in because if you go in too fast and oil squirts out here then you really need to do it all over again because you don't know how much you lost so if I turn this uh, you'll see it drop in place you see that uh, and then it's spring loaded right there if you don't feel that spring you have an issue because you always want to feel that spring so again let's drop it in so it stops there 
and then I turn it and push it and it drops in and then I got my spring okay so now I take my cap with my spacer washer put it on okay and then the same thing when I took this apart I'm gonna hold my nut my 14 millimeter nut and tighten my cap so that my spec my 10.5 millimeter does not change so let's see we're gonna put the 17 on there I'm gonna put the 14 on here you'll see the 14 stay still and the other one do the turning so right there and you know you just snug that down I call it half a gur you know gur so half a gur is oh, I don't know 20 foot pounds or so all right so now before I put everything in place you know I need to pull this out so I'm gonna lift this up I'm gonna pull my tool out okay now one thing I want to show you if you remember when we took it apart I showed you through them holes how the metal was right up against the holes and we wanted to turn it so that my pins from my spring compressor end up on the flat side so that's the same way we want to put it together but we're not just going to do it like this and then unload a couple hundred pounds of spring pressure I'm going to take this I'm going to drop it in place I'm going to push down on it now I'm going to unload my spring pressure okay so we take this out Oops. that would have been funny huh okay you've seen that but it kind of broke loose okay so there and then I just pull that off why isn't that coming off and not go up far enough there so it was just offset a little bit okay so now and you know yes your fork parts need to be cleaned and we cleaned everything as we assembled it however during the spring compressor you always get fingerprints on this so wipe this stuff off do a final cleaning before you close up this fork okay get that good and clean okay now I'm just simply going to slide my tube up I'm going to clamp it in the vise you only clamp it in the vise where your triples hold okay so I wouldn't clamp it in the vise down here even though it'd probably be okay but the strongest part is where the triples are all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this cap backwards because these are super fine threads until I hear that that's my threads falling in place and lining up now I go forward okay so I'm just gonna do like this snug it down okay now to seat that cap I'm gonna come back and just slam it like that that's good that's all I needed you don't need to abuse anything okay so then if you were smart like I am you recorded all your settings before you took them apart so this is actually for a local racer so I know he was four lines of preload and nine clicks out on the rebound so because I'm old I gotta get my glasses so you got one two three four lines showing okay anytime you set your valving you always go all the way in and count clicks out okay so we're just gonna screw it all the way in I don't even care about the clicks okay so right there I don't get a full click so I come back to my first click right there I call that zero some people call it one but I call it zero so there's zero one two three four five six seven 
eight, nine was where this guy was at. And that's it. That's the right way to do a fork. Uh, no cutaway, no, you know, not showing you the whole job. Um, that's everything. So again, some of the most important parts, polishing the tubes. You know, in my opinion, that's one of the most important parts of doing a fork job, period. Um, if you're not doing that, you should start doing it. It's not hard, it just takes a few minutes extra. Um, you know, again, this is 400 grit emery cloth that I, I think I got off eBay. This is 600 uh, sandpaper that I got from Ace Hardware. And, you know, I used to use, here's 400 sandpaper. So you can use paper or the emery cloth. The emery cloth lasts longer. I mean, this one I've probably got, I don't know, 10 or 15 polish jobs on this. And you can just barely see anything in there. So it's, it's not removing material, it's polishing the tubes. Anyway, that's the most important. Second thing to remember, the height of that cap nut. That's critical. Don't mess that up. And uh, that's it. Now we're going to just do a final cycle of the fork. You want nice smooth action. You don't want it to drag anywhere or anything like that. And then because I'm picky, I'm going to give it one more final cleaning with a clean paper towel. Because you can see there's still a little bit of that oil left from uh, the coating and from the, the grease that we assembled it with. So you can see you clean that up and it just looks super nice. And again, we don't have feel of vision, but man, if you felt that, a baby's ass ain't that smooth. <laughs> All right, that's it. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope it helps somebody out. Uh, if you're a local guy, you know who I am. If you have any questions or problems, shoot me a message. If you're on YouTube, uh, post a message, post a comment, and I'll try to respond to it if you have any questions. So that's it. You guys uh, have a good day. Speed safe.